Hello. This video will discuss some of the considerations when setting up to use your gradebook within the EDSB platform with a specific focus on secondary courses. So here we are logged into our ADSB demo account. You'll notice that the teacher name is Annie Lawrence for this class. We're going to be going into a grade 10 academic math class. So if you uh, are lucky enough to teach the same course, it might look familiar. If not, hopefully you can glean uh, the ideas that we're getting at here with respect to setting up your course. So log in from the splash page and we're going to actually go into a class and look at some of the setup options. You'll notice when we go into this class that it's a very blank class. We've never used it before. You might have some stuff that's that's posted onto the newsfeed or in the calendar or wherever. Uh, just know some of those things, if you have added assessment items or units, they will actually show up in the gradebook. A lot of times in ESB when you post stuff, it kind of cross-populates into other areas within uh, the ESB platform. So just know that when we do get in that you might have some of those instances where you're seeing stuff pop up that you didn't know would show up. So the first place we'll go to discuss setup options for your gradebook is actually into the setup for the course itself. This is something you'll have to do for each of the individual courses that you teach. Um, and, and the setup for the course is located in the top right hand corner. There's a little chevron here beside the bell. Uh, if we click that and go down to the setup options, we'll notice that we have access to a number of things. But the one that we're going to talk about right now is this show averages in the gradebook and the perspective. So if you as the teacher want to turn that ability for the gradebook to average inside of the gradebook, we can select the don't show option and that average will not be calculated. That average is always calculated though and it's something that can be brought into the report card or the progress report. And for the time being, we're actually going to show it in the gradebook just to, to show you some of the things that happen inside the gradebook with respect to the average. But just know if you do want to turn that off and focus more on most consistent, most recent in your uh, calculation of a student grade, that you can do that. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, close out of here and get back to the course feed itself. So we'll save that back to the main page for the course. And now let's go into the gradebook and look at some of the options within the gradebook itself. Okay, so from the home page for the course, we're going to access the gradebook in the top right hand course portion of the uh, course. We'll click on the gradebook option. This takes us inside of, of the gradebook. And the gradebook in Edsby uh, does have two layers of weighting that we're going to call it. And we're going to set up those weightings um, just so that very similar to Markbook, if you've used Markbook before, there are those two layers to weighting, both from a, an overall course perspective and then individually assessment by assessment. So let's go in and find out where those different options are in terms of weighting. To access those higher level or the overall weighting levels within the course, we're going to go up to the top right hand corner inside of the gradebook and access this gear. When we click on the gear, we'll see a drop down menu, edit weighting being one of those, and we'll click on that. So if you're setting this up for the first time, you will have no weighting buckets available to you. In the past, what we've done as secondary teachers is we've set up weighting buckets with respect to KTCA, knowledge, thinking, communication, and application. If you select that specific option, we'll actually get those buckets set up. And yes, that is the term that Edsby uses is buckets. And then we could very easily just plunk our numbers in there to divvy up uh, the mark into our various weightings. The other thing that we can do is we can also select summative and final uh, assessment items in here as well so that we could assign 70 30 uh, as as indicated in growing success for our for our buckets. We are going to come back into the buckets in just a second but I did want to show you uh, what is here for the weighting buckets because this has brought up a larger discussion as as a board about how those buckets should be created. And so our best thinking at the time is that there are one of four options in order for setting up your buckets. Now, in alignment with growing success, as I just indicated, one of those options uh, or, or all of these options do have to adhere to the rule that uh, the term work is 70% of the final mark, while the final exam or final summative assessment items collectively are 30% of the final mark. So in terms of options for how to break down the 70% term mark, uh, as a board, we've come up with four options 
for that and how those can manifest themselves within EDSB. Uh, the first option is very simple. 30% is for the term mark. And basically what we're going to do is put all of our other summative assessment items into the 70% bucket and weight those assessment items accordingly relative to one another. Okay, so to reflect how that would look in EDSB, we'll go back into here. All that we're going to do is choose to have our final summative assessment items, and we can choose one final summative thing. We could choose multiple things to be in the same bucket, so we know that all of those final summative things add to 30%. That allows us to have everything else, as you can see down here, be the other 70% of our mark. Then we know that everything else, literally, will go into that other bucket, and we need to have the relative weightings within that bucket proper. So we'll look at how that happens uh, when we get there. The other option is maybe I know that I want my final summative to be 10% of my final mark, and then I can add a separate bucket for the final exam that's maybe 20. So I could put them together into one bucket, or I can separate them out into 10 and 20, as long as they add to 30 for those final summative uh, assessment items, and then everything else can go into the 70 bucket. So that's one of our options in terms of what we can do to break down that 70% term mark and add it into EDSB. The other three options for the breakdown of our 70% term bucket are going to get us away from our KTCA or achievement chart category breakdowns as we've previously been accustomed to. So as opposed to putting in knowledge, thinking, communication, application percentages, we're going to, uh, what we would like to do is break down our buckets into one of these three options. So we can break it into big ideas or learning cycles for the course, strands or groups of overall expectations for the course, or the overall course expectations themselves. And again, these three options will, be, will probably be ideal for different subject areas themselves. So those will be discussions to have within schools and within departments for as to how those breakdowns will occur. Let's look at how, however, how to set up one of these three options because the way to set up these three options is the same in EDSB and let's go ahead and look at that now. So here we are back in the EDSB gradebook. We see that we've cleared our buckets out and we want to look at choosing buckets as you saw by overall expectation, groups of overall expectation and if we select this drop down menu here we'll see that we have a number of options none of those however refer to the overall expectations we do see one option that seems to be in alignment but if we click strands we'll actually notice that we get knowledge thinking communication application so we can't use that as one of our weighting buckets uh, per se so let's X on that so it'll it'll delete that so we see no options here for overall expectations, strands, big ideas. We also see no way to customize buckets. There is one option, however, which is customizable elsewhere in ESB, and that is the units. So we're going to make use of that, and we're going to set up our units to be exactly what we want our weighting buckets to be. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back into this interface in a second. So I've navigated back to the home page for the course. There are a number of ways that I can add units into the course. I can add them into the planner. I can add them when I create an assessment item. But the easiest place to create our units in order to use as our buckets is here in the content area. So we're going to go into the content area and set up whatever we want our buckets to be. So we'll click on the content. We'll go in. We see we don't have anything in here. If you've already used the content area, you might have units set up and material in here. So this just might be something you want to talk about for September uh, moving forward. We'll click the edit button because right now we really can't do anything. When we click edit, we'll see that we get a few more buttons here, specifically next to the title of the course. If we click on the plus sign, we'll see a number of things kind of in the drop down menu. If you want to learn how to use more of these things within the content builder, more of these tools, go ahead and watch the videos that relate to the content builder itself. For now, though, we just want to create a unit in this course that we can use as a bucket. Click unit, and literally all we need to do once we click unit is give that unit a title. So again, in alignment with what you want to do in terms of your weighting buckets, we're going to set up those units accordingly. So here, I'm going to set my buckets up in terms of the 
the collections of overall expectations or the strands for the course. So in grade 10 academic math, there are three overall strands. I'll give the title of one of those, save it, and I'll do that two more times so that I have three units in terms of the strands for the course. Okay, so here I have now my three units for the course, and those are going to be the three units with which I break my term mark into. However, if I'm going to use the unit option, the other thing that I'm going to want to do is you add a unit within the gradebook for the summative uh, evaluation at the end of the course. And the reason for that is it's just a lot easier in the gradebook later to do that. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll navigate to the gradebook. Okay, so we have our four units set up, three for the term, one for the final summative. We'll click on Gradebook to go back to the Gradebook and look at how that manifests itself here and in the waiting buckets. At the top of the screen, you'll see that there is a view. We can switch the view to be a units view, in which case we'll now see our four units show up as headers across the top. The other thing, and the reason that we set these up this way, is we can now go into the Edit Waiting section and we can choose our buckets accordingly. So if in our drop-down menu we go all the way down to the bottom of our list and select units, we'll now see that our four units can be brought in uh, that we created in the content builder. We can give the appropriate percentages, final summative being 30%, the other three adding to 70, and we'll have set up our buckets exactly how we want to as per our departmental discussions. Okay, so now that I've set up these buckets and the weightings of those, uh, I want to save that and I want to go into my gradebook and look at that second layer of weighting when it, as it refers to individual assessment items within any of these buckets. So we'll go ahead and save that. We'll pop into here into our gradebook and we're going to add some individual assessment items. So in order to do that, we'll click Add Assessment up here. You can do this again from a number of places within uh, the gradebook itself. We're going to call this a project and you'll see that the assessment interface shows up. We're going to give it a title. We want to make sure we select the proper unit. We'll deal in quadratics for now. We can attach expectations as well. And hopefully moving forward, what ESBY will allow us to do is stop at either of these first two levels to attach either a strand or an overall expectation. For now, however, we need to select specific expectations to attach to each assessment item. Again, moving forward, we've asked to be able to stop at one of these two columns so that we won't need to set up those buckets how we have, because for now, that's kind of our workaround in order to get our buckets set up how we want them. Okay, so we'll go ahead, uh, attach those expectations. We'll give it a title. And we'll scroll down to the other part where we have the second layer of weighting. So you'll see here this assessment item, because it's assessment of learning, it has a weighting value here. Um, if we switch this to an assessment for or as learning, a, a formative assessment measure, that weighting uh, value disappears. So it is nice in Gradebook that, that we can record formative assessment data without that affecting the average, which is different than our current Markbook program, if you're familiar with it. For now, we're going to focus on assessment of learning, however. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put a weighting out of a certain value. And you'll see that the weighting value populates. We can always change that in here. And our suggestion is that you pick some baseline value to use your weighting so that when you're doing all these assessments of learning, you kind of have that starting point where you can put all of your assessments in as the same weighting and then kind of play off there. So if everything has a weighting of 10, we can give things with more importance, maybe a weighting of 15 or 20, and things with less importance that are summative, maybe weightings of 8, 9, 7, 6, 5. We'll go ahead and do that, save it. I'll add a few more assessment items, and then we'll look at how those things manifest themselves in the gradebook. Okay, so you'll see now I've added three assessment items into my gradebook, all in the quadratics unit. You'll notice that uh, all of them are assessments of learning or summative assessment items. And I guess the problem is if I look in this gradebook interface, I can't really tell what the relative weighting of these items are with respect to each other. And the only way to check that is to individually go into each assessment item. So a little workaround in order to see what the overall weighting of each item is, is to go back into this edit weighting section up in the top right. And you'll see that within my quadratics button, it's listing all of my assessment items, their weight relative to each other, and their overall percentage of the mark that 
they're they're accounting for and we can go ahead and adjust those if i didn't notice that that should have been 10 10 and 10 i can adjust those accordingly and save that in my gradebook so those are some considerations when setting up your gradebook within edsby for secondary have a wonderful day